Hello and welcome. Today I am doing a wire fox terrier pet head and I thought I would take you along with me. Even though Winston is a pet trim, he does still get hand stripped. So I've already done my hand stripping, his bath, and his prep work and now we're ready to trim up the face. I start my trim by grabbing my smaller clippers and starting the finer clipper work. I'm going to set my clippers to a 9, I like them a little bit longer, but a 10 works too. And then I'm going to go from the flue, which is at the corner of the, that big canine, and I'm going to take them all the way down to about two fingers above the sternum. I like the smaller clippers because they don't irritate the skin in sensitive areas as easily as my bigger clippers do. Once I've cleaned up my line down to the sternum, I'm going to return to the face here and go from flue to corner of eye and corner of eye to corner of ear. Sometimes I leave a little bit of an overhang so I have just enough hair to help blend that line so it's not super harsh. And now I'm just meeting the corner of the ear down to the point of sternum to make a really nice V down the neck. I tend to use my clippers to skim off to blend that neckline. If you don't do that and you want to use your thinners, that's totally okay too. I'm going to repeat those meeting points from flu to corner of eye, from corner of eye to ear, and then corner of ear down to sternum on the other side. On a show dog, typically where I'm clipping is completely hand stripped. Unfortunately, when Winston came to me, he was already clipped in this area and it was too soft and I couldn't bring the harsh coat back. You'll see that the tan points in his face are a lot less bright in color than his ears, which are hand stripped. Now I'm going to set my clippers to a 15 or 30, and we're going to shave the insides of the ears. I like to clip the insides of the ears pretty tight so that way none of those lighter colored hairs that aren't stripped are sticking out beyond the hairs that are stripped from the ear. And I want a really pretty triangle ear when I'm done. I'm also going to clip with the little ear node that's in front of the canal, but I want to make sure that I'm not going into the face, otherwise you might cause a slight bald spot. You can definitely see the difference that hand stripping makes on the ear here. The color is a lot more saturated. With my larger clippers, I'm going to take a two guard comb over a 30 blade and go over the head, making sure that I don't clipper these eyebrows. I'm also going to take my clippers over these lines to help blend. I follow the line from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye, but you could also go from cheek up to the head and skimming off if you prefer that method. You just really want to make sure that you're not taking your clippers over your brow because you will lose your eyebrows. I'm also going to use this length to blend the head into the neck and the back of the ears into the front of the ears. And now it's time for our scissors. I'm going to scissor the edges of the ears with small straight shears and I'm going to make sure that I brush out all of the little bits that might be hiding in there. I know trimming ears is really intimidating. Find your comfiest shears and always keep a hand on the dog so you can feel when the dog's going to move and react in time with your scissors. You can also do a light pinch between your thumb and finger on the dog's ear leather to help guide you down the edge of the dog's ear. There is no race for speed here, so take it slow and take it at the pace that you and the dog are most comfortable at. A rule to be noted about trimming ears is to never trim your ears with the tips of your shears pointed toward the base. Always keep tip to tip so the tip of your shears should always be pointing towards the tip of the dog's ear. This will help reduce the chances that you'll end up cutting an ear, because the hair that grows on the ear will naturally push your shears away from the leather. To blend the lines on the face, you're going to need your favorite thinners. I'm going to flip his ear out of the way and brush all of the hair in the direction I want it to lay. I'm going to use double thinners because they're faster. If you don't have double thinners, you can use a single-sided thinner. And I'm just going to blend all of these lines so they're nice and smooth. We even want a really smooth transition into the brow. We don't want anything sticking out extra here. As we move deeper into the brow, we want to make sure that the tips of our shears are pointed at the nose and not dipping in further. I'm going to keep moving along, blending all of this line to make sure that everything has a very smooth transition. We want to make sure that the wire fox terrier head is in the shape of a rectangle. 
When you look at the dog from the nose, you shouldn't see anything sticking out. Think of kind of a small brick. This may mean that you may have to take your cheeks tighter or leave a little bit more fill between the eye and the muzzle to help that transition. When you view the dog from the profile like we have here, you want to make sure the two important lines, the top of the head and the top of the muzzle, run parallel to each other. I'm going to do a little bit more blending behind the ear to make sure that this transition from ear to neck is really smooth. If you're ever looking for a misplaced hair on a groom, the perfect place is to go right behind this ear. This is where the pesky hairs like to hide. To make sure he doesn't move back into my shears while I'm scissoring, I'll make a light pinch with the tip of his ear between my thumb and his head. This will also help me feel if he decides to move last minute and I can adjust my scissors accordingly. I'm just stripping out a few hairs here that I feel I've missed. Now I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. I'm going to use my favorite blenders and blend the top of the head and the cheek. I'm going to transition that into the brow, making sure the points of my scissors are pointing towards the dog's nose. And excuse my reach while I grab some hairs near the ear. I'm going to brush the beard hair back into place and then smooth the transition between the eye and the beard. And even though they want to pant, you're going to have to apply a little bit of pressure to make sure that their mouth is closed while you do this. We're going to make those eyebrows pop by cleaning out the corners of the eyes. Again, on a show dog, this is typically stripped, but we're going to use our favorite thinners. First, we want to carefully raise all of the hair with a comb, and I'm going to pull a few hairs that I know that can be pulled, <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with my thinners, and I'm just going to work around that brow. You should be able to feel the brow if you're having a hard time spotting it. If you feel above the eye, you should feel little divots right when the brow starts. That's the ball that you kind of want to roll around. Once you feel the brow bone, you don't want to cut any of that hair that's on there. It should be noted that a wire fox doesn't have eyebrows like a Scottish Terrier. They are short. But Winston's parents like to see a little bit more expression, so I do take these a little bit shorter for their sake. Most of my trim is set in place. All I'm doing now is blending the back of the head and into the neck. I want a very smooth transition. The last thing I want is to make it look like he went to the dog factory and we just plopped on a head onto a random body. We're also going to double check behind the ears to make sure there's no hairs hiding back there. And I'm going to pull down these hairs that are trying to hide up in that little flap of the ear. I'm going to give his beard a little trim as well. I don't normally have to trim very much off of it just because he breaks a lot of it. So when trimming the beard, I want to make sure that I'm still following that same direction that I've set with the face. I'm also going to pull out the little front wispy hairs here that tends to get stuck in their mouths and I'm going to give that a trim as well. And I'm going to kind of come straight down off the front. If you give your scissors any more of an angle other than the straight up and down with the nose, you'll kind of get that gnome beard where it comes to a point. And with that finishing touch, that will finish our wire fox terrier head. And if you could give Winston a big thumbs up for being such a patient model, he would really appreciate it. If you're wondering what tools I use today, they are all listed in the description down below. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments. I always try my best to respond. Thanks for stopping by, and until next time, happy grooming!